Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you. Now, I hope you're learning something from everything I've been sharing with you. I've been sharing with you on how to keep your heart. Got it. Out of this, your heart are the issues of life. And I said every temptation that you are going to face in life is coming, is targeted at your heart. To turn your heart away from the truth. To turn your heart away from the Lord. But you know what? If you will keep, you know, he said that will keep in perfect peace. Those whose hearts are perfect towards him. Did you see that? He will keep in perfect peace. The people whose hearts are perfect towards him. Let's pray, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We present our hearts to you, Lord. <clears throat> we are receiving all these informations because you want us to grow. You want us strengthened. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Even right now, you're guiding us into all truth. Thank you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As we're praying, Thank you, Holy Spirit. Someone is being healed in the heart already. Yeah. You haven't had troubles. The Lord is healing your heart right now. I saw that while we're praying. There's a calmness coming on you right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I speak healing to your heart. I speak healing to your heart right now. <clears throat> yes, in the name of the Lord Jesus, be healed. You will not have that surgery. Yes, that's what I hear the Lord say. You will not have that surgery. You will go to the doctors and then they will tell you, it has changed. <laughs> Praise God. For God is giving you a new heart. Receive it right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now, <clears throat> Proverbs 4.23 says, Keep your heart with all diligence. Why? Every issue of your life springs out from your heart. Why is your neighbor going to rise up suddenly against you? Why are your children going to suddenly begin to trouble you? Why is your boss going to suddenly start picking on you? You know what the devil is after? Not, not the boss, not the neighbor. They don't know these things, <laughs> praise God. It's the devil that is behind the scene. You know what he's after? Your heart. The perfection of your heart. He's after it. God created your heart perfect. Now, we won't say heart. We're just talking about the physical heart that pumps out blood. We're talking about your mind. Your mindset. That's what Satan is after. If he can distract you where your heart is concerned, he can distract your life. And that comes in several ways. <clears throat> A few days ago, I think two days ago, so I was sharing with you about, about uh, maybe God has called you to something. And, and Satan will come and inspire you to, to try it before the time. You remember Jesus when he was tempted. I'll share this with you. And, and Jesus was here praying and, and, and fasting for 40 days. And then Satan showed up. Now you, you think someone is fasting and praying for 40 days. The least person that should be there should be Satan. But Satan came. And I told you that before. He's always around us. There's nothing you can do about it. But you see, don't let him deceive, confuse, or stop you. He doesn't have such ability. So Jesus was fasting and, and, and he was just, and then Satan shows up. And guess what Satan said? If you are the son of God, and he was hungry, command these stones to be made bread. Why do you have to go back to the city to eat? Stay here. You are so anointed. Command these stones to be made bread. Eat it. And, and, and you'll be fine. And, and Jesus thought about it. I'm hungry, actually. 
And I, I, do you know the funny thing? <clears throat> and this is the funny part. God had ordained that Jesus would do a bread miracle. I wish you would understand this. Now here was Jesus at that backside of the mountain, alone. And Satan says, command these stones to be made bread. Now it must have resonated with Jesus. Why? Because I'm supposed to do a bread miracle. So is this it? And Jesus knew, but this is not God commanding me to do this. This is my hunger, me responding to hunger. And, and Satan taking advantage of that to inspire words in my heart. That's why every time you must check the motive for which you do things. That's how you separate between Satan, the voice of the devil, and the voice of God. Check your motive. Your original motive. Now also, there are times God can command you into a thing. And then while you're obeying the Lord, a different motive, Satan can tamper with your motive. Your motive was right when you started. For, for, like, for example, God said, go do something. And you didn't know prosperity was going to come out from that thing. You didn't know that. You just, okay, Lord, I'll just obey. And then you begin to, then, then blessings, prosperity start coming out from that thing. And I, oh, wow, man, I can make some more money from here, you know. And then your motive now changes from just simply obeying the Lord to how to preserve and, and make yourself rich. Motive can change. But from the beginning, you check your motive. <clears throat> so Jesus said, nah. And then he remembered the word. After all, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So Jesus knew right now, it is not from the mouth of God telling him to command stones to be made bread. So Jesus said, I won't do it. Now, if Jesus had commanded those stones to be made bread, it would have turned to bread. He would have eaten it. But guess what? It is the same Satan that will raise up an accusation against Jesus later that he had done the bread miracle. But guess what? It was Jesus that would have been telling the disciples, Hey guys, do you know when I was fasting 40 days and 40 nights, I was so hungry. I just came to my spirit to make command stones to be made bread. And I made them and I ate and I, that's how I got strength to come back home. Yeah. That would have been it. But because Jesus refused it, the day came when the Lord commanded him, Jesus, you see these people? I want you to feed them. And the Lord said, feed them with what? Give them bread. I have, I have provided the bread. Oh, okay, Lord. Thank you. <clears throat> and then he turned to the disciples. Hey, guys, I want us to feed all these people. Say, feed, eh, what, what are you trying to say? He said, what do you have? He said, someone had just given us five loaves and two fishes. I've told you this before. The boy had given the five loaves before Jesus asked. So it was the boy's offering to the ministry of Jesus already. So don't think Jesus said, we need bread. And someone said, okay, see bread. Okay, thank you. No, God had provided the bread. That's why the Lord commanded him. Everything God commands, he sends the provision. That's number one. Number two, whatever provision you are sure that God sent, it's enough. So Jesus said, what do you have? He said, just five loaves and two fishes. What is that to this whole crowd? Jesus said, no, fine, it's enough. Get everybody to sit down in 50s and, and bring the bread. And then they brought it. He blessed it. And then he was just responding in faith. And then he shared. He told them, oh, yeah, take share to the people. They ate over 5,000 men. <laughs> they ate, they were satisfied, and there were 12 baskets left. And he did it again to the 4,000. <laughs> Praise God. Now, it's not Jesus that told that miracle. It wasn't Jesus that wrote it in the Bible. It is the disciples and the people that were there. They were the ones going abroad saying, boy, we saw something we've never seen before. Say, what is it? This Jesus. It's something else. What happened? Well, we were in the wilderness with him. Oh. He fed everybody. He said, go away. What do you mean? That crowd. From where? That's a funny thing. We don't know. Somebody said there was a miracle about the bread. Now, those are those people who really didn't know what happened. Then those who knew what, the disciples that saw what happened, like, man, what a thing. Praise God. You see, they told the miracle. 
Secondly, on that mountain when Jesus was fasting, Satan showed up and said, look, I want you to do something. Jump down from the Bible said he took him to the pinnacle and said, jump down from this place. For he has commanded his angels and they will catch you. Now, if Jesus had jumped, let me ask you this question. Do you think he would have died? You think Jesus would have jumped to his death? No. If Jesus had believed that, all oh, right, that's true. Let me exercise this power. Father, I know your angels are here. That's how Jesus would have prayed. And he would have jumped and landed safely. But you see, God had ordained for Jesus that he was going to jump right into hell, not just from a mountain to the ground. Jesus was going to jump right into hell that no man has ever come out from. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Thirdly, Satan showed up and said, look, the Bible said he showed Jesus all the kingdoms of this world in a moment of time. And he says, all this I will give to you if only you will do something. Bow down and worship me. <laughs> that wasn't difficult for Jesus. Jesus said, hey, 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 guy, guy, it has been said to me. You shall worship the Lord your God and him only you will serve. He refused. You know why? If Jesus had obeyed Satan, of course, Satan wasn't telling him to go on his knees and put his head on the ground and say, all hail Satan. That's not what Satan was telling Jesus. Satan was actually inviting Jesus to come and reign as an emperor of the world because that's the kind of rulership the world had then. So Satan was telling, putting ideas in the mind of Jesus. See, you're so full of wisdom. You're so full of anointing. Just join hands with me. All these kingdoms is, you know, is in my hands. I will give it to you just like that. So if Jesus had responded to that, I'll tell you this for free. He would have become like the name Jesus that we know today would have been like the same way you know Caesar or Nero or one of those rulers that ruled the earth or Ahasuerus. We would have heard his story too. Maybe he would have done some mighty good, good things. But that's where it would have ended. Because God had planned for Jesus that he was going to be the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Jesus today has authority in every nation. Every nation. You say you want to shut your nation from the, from the gospel entry? You're joking. You're, Jesus will visit one village inside your nation and start out the gospel there. And then it will begin to spread and spread and spread. There is nowhere in those earths that Jesus doesn't have authority. What am I saying to you? Satan comes first. And his job is to tempt your heart away from... He will entice you. He will deceive you. That's why I say, check your motive. And when your motive is genuine, what, what, what should be the genuine motive? I just want to please God. I just want to serve God. Never do anything because of the gain you're going to get from it. Never. And, and you know, sometimes, you know, business ideas are coming to you and then you begin to calculate the figures. And, Man, whoa! Wow, you mean I'm going to make all this money? Whoa! You need to pause. And say, Lord, do you want me to do this? I, I, I can see the prospects. But Lord, you know what? Everything I see from there, you can give it to me without me doing that. Without me even doing it. So I would rather believe you than that. But if you want me to do it for any reason, then give me the command. And I'll do it as an obedience to you, not because of the money that I'll make. Listen, this is the mentality of children that God is raising for these last days. They will be rich. They will be wealthy. But let me tell you the truth. They are wealth. Their influence will never be their passion. Their passion will be, Lord, what next do you want done on the earth? Hallelujah. They, they are wealthy. So they are not even looking for who to partner with to do. They are, they are Lord, what, what would you have me do? And the Lord will command them, I want you to take a whole nation for me. And this is how I want you to do. Say, Lord, thank you. 
he gets his team together and he said, we are taking the, the economy of that nation. And we are doing it unto the Lord. Everything they do, they are doing unto the Lord. They are not doing it for name. They are not doing it for fame. They are doing it because they want to see the kingdom of God fully expressed. They are rising. And if you're one of them, then join me to say praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because my time is up. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.